on one question. Okay, now I can redo this, right? Guys, it would actually be really good if I could talk in a normal tone of voice. Because when you're watching the videos, it sounds like I'm yelling at you, okay? If you go from here to here, you have 2y times... I realize that this is troubling because you have dy, dx. It's a bunch of symbols. Look at this. It's actually five things. D, Y, a line, and DX, but you're looking at it as a single thing here. You have you have that equals one. You're isolating this, so you magically want to take this and put it over here, right? Okay? D, Y, DX. Only if you have a lasso tool. I don't know why I say things like this. This is the derivative. You could actually change it. You can leave it like this if you want, or you can write it as you can replace the y with what it says it's equal to, I suppose. What could you say that the y is equal to there? y is equal to the square root of x. So you could say that this is... You could say that this is 1 over 2 square root of y, but it would have to be... It's not y, x. But it would have to be plus or minus because y is plus or minus. I want you to look back at the graph now and see what it is. Okay, this is saying the, de the derivative of this, the slope of this curve at this point. Do you remember what the, ex what the, what the expression was? It was 1 over 2y. The y value here at this particular point is negative 2. The slope is, what's the slope? Negative a quarter. So it was 1 over 2y. So 1 over 2 times negative 2 is negative a quarter. If you looked at it as a function of y, if you look at it as x as a function of y, then you have a unique slope for every y value, right? Like for this particular y value, there's only one slope here. For this particular y value, there's one slope. If you look at it as how I changed it to, I changed it to that, right? If we're looking at it as from the x point of view, there's plus or minus because there's two slopes at this x value, right? There's positive or negative. So if you go back to this, if we look at it from the x value, when x is 4, there's actually two points on the graph. It's 1 over 2 times the square root of x plus or minus. Square root of x is 2. So it's plus or minus one quarter. It's there or it's this one up here, right? There's two different places where it has that slope. Okay? If you go to if you go to this value here, remember that if we do the one over the x or y value there, it's going to be undefined because it's one over two times zero or one over two times square root of zero, which is undefined. Okay, the slope of that curve is a vertical tangent there. It's undefined because if you come from this side, it approaches negative infinity. If you come from this side, it approaches positive infinity, the y values. Okay, I think we probably get this now. If you want to do this, like you could have, what you could have done is you could have solved it for y and then found the derivative the usual way. But we're going to look at things where y appears in more than one place or it's more convenient to do it without solving for y, which you can do here. I would like you to try doing that now. Find the derivative of this. You may well have done, looked at what the graph of that looks like. It's a circle. It's a circle with a radius of 5. Okay. I would like you to try and, if you want, you can graph it on your calculator, but you have to isolate y. But you can find the derivative by taking both sides and differentiating implicitly. You're not explicitly finding it. It doesn't say y equals, so clearly y prime is. You're finding the derivative by implicitly differentiating, saying if this is true, then the derivative of each side has to be equal as well. Okay, move this over and make room for it. 
if you want the graph, somehow I've lost the, where's it going here? There it is. I will pause right this. Finding the derivative of each side. If You already know that if you have the derivative of two things here, derivative of that and that, you find them separately. The derivative of x squared, this is easy. Derivative of x squared is 2x. You don't even have to use the chain rule because it's x squared and the, with respect to x. This one's the one that's the one you have to think about more. It's 2y, but then it's times dy dx because you're finding the derivative with respect to x, not y. Okay? The other side is also easy because it's a constant. So this is 0. Then we want to isolate dy dx here. It's implicit differentiation because you don't get the derivative right away without doing any isolating. It's it's implied in here what the derivative is, but it but you can't just read off right away what the derivative is. I'm I'm telling you this statement tells you what the derivative is without really telling you right away. It's not explicitly stated, right? If if you are gonna watch a, a show on TV and it says, caution, the following show contains scenes of explicit violence, what are they saying? You're, you're going to see the violence, right? You're going to see the violence. They don't ever say, caution, the following, scene, uh, the following show contains scenes of implicit violence. If they did, what they would do is something like somebody's raising this big sword in the air and then they cut to a scene where somebody's kind of lying on the ground dead. dead. <laughs> But you don't actually see what happened, right? They are clearly implying what happened. And as time goes by, things become more explicit on TV, right? I don't even know if you could, you know, 50 years ago, you'd be hard-pressed to show anything on TV. Um, anyways, you're implicitly finding the derivative. Can we Can we solve this now? Using your lasso tool, you move this to the other side and make it negative. Lasso, that's what it's called. <laughs> I know you don't. Then what you're forced to do is just write it again, unfortunately, right? You're forced to write negative 2x over here equals 2y dy dx. And then dy dx equals negative 2x over 2y. And then dy dx, negative x over y. Please think about what this means. This means that the derivative is the x-coordinate divided by the y-coordinate times negative 1. The x-coordinate divided by the y-coordinate times negative 1. If you want what it said here is the derivative at this point, you sub in those values at, what was it, 3, negative 4? Yeah. dy dx equals negative 3 divided by negative 4, or positive 3 quarters. We will check with this thing here to see, okay? I like how they give you three chances to say no now. Yes, are you sure you really want to do this? Are you sure you are you sure when you said yes you really were right when you said yes? Uh, what do we want? We want down here. What is it? Three negative four. This point. Okay. The slope is three quarters. The slope is three quarters. There. You could put this on your graphing calculator, but you'd have to put the two halves of the circle. The positive half and the negative half. If you wanted to do that, you if you really wanted to put it on your calculator, anything, even if it isn't written like a function, you can solve it for y and put it in as two halves. If you were to take x squared plus y squared equals 25, you could, even if you don't have a lasso tool, you could write 25 minus x squared. And you could say y is plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. 
Thank you. Okay, so you could put Y1, I'm living on the edge here, with how far, okay, Y1, Y2, 